Welcome back everyone for the biggest bad boy, Cobra Kai Season 5 Watch Party. We got the first promotional images of Cobra Kai Season 5 and they are fire. Let's dive right in and take a look. Off the top is the return of the bad boy of karate himself, Mike Barnes. Although it wasn't exactly the biggest held secret, we have final confirmation he will be in Season 5. The possibilities are through the roof. What has he been up to? There's definitely room for speculation. In the image itself, we see Barnes with his hands up ready to fight. He's most definitely looking to throw down right there. But what's most intriguing about this image is his eyes look red and bloodshot. Just compare them to how Sean Kanan's eyes normally look. There's clearly something different here. It's a piece of information with no context. Some have noticed the wedding ring and wonder if his wife died, and somehow that was brought up in the conversation. That would explain the eyes and why he's looking to start a fight. But then it could be something else entirely. Mike is definitely well-dressed. This appears to be a nice home or upscale lounge. You can see different sofas and a nice bar or counter in the background. I think in the years after Karate Kid 3, Mike Barnes has done well for himself. Perhaps he continued as a tournament fighter and won some recognition. I've always liked the idea that Mike Barnes was an early star in the MMA fighting and dominated the field. In fact, he was always undefeated. His only loss ever was to Daniel LaRusso. That's a loss that stings to this day. This would make Barnes a contrast to Johnny. Johnny lost to Daniel and his life sort of spiraled out after that. He could never quite get back on track and was working as a handyman with an estranged son. Barnes didn't lose control like that. He kept going and was successful. But still, there is one blemish on his record. That blemish is Kata in the middle of a karate tournament. <laughs> Who saw that coming? The natural inclination is to assume Barnes works for Terry Silver again. Even though he lost the tournament, we don't know what happened after, and maybe they left on good terms. We haven't seen Barnes teaching any classes, but that could also be because they were keeping him a secret. One of my favorite ideas is somehow Barnes works with Johnny, though it's hard to see how that team up comes to be. So it's looking like the bad boy of karate is still bad, and maybe looking the right, the one wrong in his life. His loss to Daniel LaRusso. Moving on is a very interesting picture of Daniel, Johnny, and Gasoline in the backyard of Miyagi-Do, with a lot of other well-dressed people behind them. Clearly something significant is going on here. I tend to think the others in the background are karate senseis who own other dojos in the valley. Basically, Cobra Kai is expanding everywhere and taking over. Daniel knows he can't stop them himself, so he's inviting other senseis here to talk about grouping together. They have to work as a unified unit to counter Cobra Kai. We saw in the trailer Silver laying out a map. The other markings on the map could be dojos owned by the people here. As the story gets bigger, so do the dojos. We've reached the stage where there will be multiple dojos and multiple senseis on both sides, all competing with each other. Next, we have a really interesting picture of a lot of kids bowing at Miyagi-Do. There's one huge, important point about this picture that takes precedence over everything else. It's the one detail that makes all these promo images worth it. Hawk is regrowing the hawk. Though his hair is still a little short, he's definitely letting it grow back and intends for there to be a return of the slick, spiked badass. Forget a phoenix, for it is a hawk who truly never dies. Otherwise, there are some other important things going on. Namely, Robbie is with this group. This appears to be the new Miyagi-Do. Most of the former Eagle Fang students have migrated over after Johnny closed up. But Robbie is an interesting one. Clearly, he was taking some time away from Cobra Kai, and it looks like he wasn't sticking with Johnny either. Does that mean then he has gotten over his anger at Daniel? I think so. His frustration with Daniel was always a result of being in a really bad place. Daniel was trying to help him as best he could. My other theory is Robbie has a beef with Miguel. We've seen that. Perhaps he trains with Miyagi-Do so he can confuse Sam's feelings. This would make Miguel jealous and angry. I'm not sure it would be that devious, but Robbie training with both Sam and Hawk after everything that's happened is a very unexpected moment. 
I suspect they're bowing to Gasoline, who just demonstrated some crazy move they are going to do in practice. That would explain why Anthony is excited and Dimitri has a look of horror on his face. Next we have Amanda and Carmen looking worried. Amanda is on the phone and the description said an ominous phone call. Either way, we know this friendship and connection will continue into Season 5. We saw the two families interacting a lot in Season 4. They are dressed up and probably just came home from an event. There actually seems to be a bag or something on the table in the background, but I'm not sure that is relevant. I really like this shot of Terry Silver offering Amanda a glass of wine. It's simple, but there's a lot going on here. They're not by the bar or any waiter. Terry must have gone to get the wine and brought it to her. He's putting on some charm. Now the event is unimportant. I suspect this is some socialite event in LA, maybe the country club. It's a bunch of rich people and that's why Silver runs into the LaRussos. But what's going on is Terry's plan. He knows Daniel wants to stop him. He also knows the best way to hinder Daniel is not directly but through his wife. So he puts on some charm and comes off as rational and normal to Amanda. He's even kind of a good guy. This is the complete opposite of Kreese. Kreese always projected like he was up to no good. Amanda slapped him because she couldn't hold it in. Silver, on the other hand, appears genuine. He doesn't want kids to get hurt. He just wants to give every student the opportunity to be the best he or she could ever be. He wants to give back after he's received so much. What could be wrong with that? She does appear to be wearing the same outfit we saw on the trailer. Daniel has to convince Amanda that Terry Silver is manipulating her, and that may not be easy. Next, we have a laid-back Daniel with a couple of drinks. I suspect this is somewhat earlier in the season. He's letting Gasoline teach the classes, and he's relaxing all while knowing the students are getting a fistful. The biggest question here is the second drink for someone else. Or is he drinking both by himself? It could be the latter. Also, Daniel does appear to be in his backyard. You can see this table and chair all the way back here. Plus, even this pillow was seen before over here. I suspect Daniel just moved the furniture around and is taking it easy. Next, we have Miguel and Robbie at the water park. We know tensions are still running hot between these two. Whatever the conflict, it looks like it starts inside the park and will carry on into the parking lot. Neither look like they've been in the water yet. This is probably where the whole day is ruined before it even begins. While we don't know why they're here, I am thinking it could be some attempt at a group or family bonding Johnny and Carmen are doing. They want them all to get along. It just doesn't work out. Let's look at this shot of Johnny and Robbie in Mexico. Clearly they are celebrating something. Everyone in the restaurant is too. The most likely explanation is they're all watching the TV and something big happened. Like maybe Miguel is in a televised cage fight and he just won. I also wonder if this scene takes place after Johnny and Robbie track him to the cage arena. Johnny gets into a fight and gets kicked out, then he and Robbie have to watch from this small restaurant. I also like the idea there was a bet on some hot chili pepper eating contest. Johnny bet Robbie would win, and he did. It would harken back to the ice breaking of Karate Kid 2. But whatever the reason, this is perhaps the first time we've truly seen Johnny and Robbie having a great moment together. They're both happy, so take it in. There's a picture of Kenny in a Cobra Kai class. He will definitely become a primary student, especially now that Robbie is out. More interestingly, we have Devin practicing with Tori. This is quite an unexpected reveal, as we now know Devin will join Cobra Kai. While it's unexpected, upon close examination you will see it's entirely logical. Devin was recruited by Johnny late. She had a fiery, win at all cost personality. Obviously that made her a natural eagle fang, but it was also unlike Miyaki-Do. Plus, since she joined after the dojo split, she has no connection to Miyagi-Do. She never trained with them like the rest of Eagle Fang, so she's not going to naturally go with them after Eagle Fang closes. Plus, you know Devin has an intense, must-win personality, so it would be natural for her to want to learn with the girl who beat her, the girl who won the whole thing. Pickles is on the warpath. Cobra Kai won the whole tournament on top of that, so that's where Devin wants to join. It's actually perfectly in character. 
Expect Devin to be hardcore as she wants to be the best. Also, way back when Devin and Kenny were first announced, I actually predicted they would both be in Cobra Kai. It turns out that prediction was dead on. It just took a while for it to come true. Watch Party always gives you the most accurate predictions, even if you don't realize it at first. There's also a shot of Kim Da-Un training or sparring with both Tori and Devin. Now, I talked about Sensei Kim in a previous video when she was announced, and you should check that out if you haven't seen it yet. I almost wonder if Sensei Kim will be teaching an all-girls class. Certainly, this shot appears to be all-girls, and you can imagine Terry Silver using that as a sales pitch to take over Karate in the Valley. There's definitely going to be some hardcore fighting here. And winning isn't easy. This is likely the first episode. Tori bringing her trophy to the dojo. Presumably, Terry Silver wants to display it for everyone. You recall Johnny had Miguel's trophy at the end of season one. Either way, Tori's going to confront Terry Silver about what she saw at the end of season four. He paid off the ref. Is the whole thing a scam? Did she earn her win? Since we obviously know that Tori is staying with Cobra Kai, Silver will convince her there's nothing wrong. It's also possible one of the ways he convinces her to stay is he reveals what happened to Kreese. Obviously, he'll be putting his own spin on the truth. Either way, a confrontation will take place, but Tori will ultimately decide to stay. Finally, we have Johnny in a flight suit. It looks to be a Top Gun suit as the name is Mitchell, which would be Maverick's actual name. He's clearly here to impress Carmen somehow. Maybe he's into some role playing. Maybe he learned Carmen never saw Top Gun, so he dressed up to show her the movie. Either way, it shows us Johnny and Carmen's relationship will continue. I do think they get married at some point. The biggest obstacle for them may be the hatred and rivalry between Miguel and Robbie. That clearly needs to be worked out in some fashion. It would be funny if Carmen counters that she prefers Iceman. He has abs for days. So that's a basic rundown of what we have so far. They did promise more releases each week leading up to the trailer. Be sure you're subscribed as there's going to be a lot more coming. Have a great day. I'll see you at the next watch party.